Greetings everyone, Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of our What's Hot series. This is the new product show right here's where we talk about all the great new music that's been kind of coming into our promo desk and things we like to review and talk about, things you should probably keep on your radar to possibly either go out and listen to or to buy or however it is you consume your music, right? So today, just so happens that I'm wearing my Allman Brothers Band t-shirt. We've got a really cool archival release that's just come out. It's called the Allman Brothers Band Fillmore West 71. Okay, so we all know the iconic Allman Brothers Band Fillmore East live set, okay, which was the, the album that kind of really, really broke the band. It's long been considered one of the greatest live albums of all time. was recorded at the... Um, Fillmore East, okay, back in like March of 1971, okay. Just six weeks prior to that, all right, so we're looking at January 29th, 30th, and 31st, they did a weekend long stint at the Fillmore West out in California, right? So, you know, Billy Graham was big into booking them at both the Fillmore West and the Fillmore East right around that time, and that really helped to break the band on the live circuit. So we've got here, so six weeks before recording at the Fillmore East in New York City, they recorded a all of the Ullman Brothers sets, okay, they were actually opening up for Electric Hot Tuna at the time, okay, got it all on tape, it's been sitting in the vaults for all these years, now we've got it released from the uh, Ullman Brothers Band Recording Company, Okay, under license from uh, Galadriel Allman and Greg and the Greg Allman Estate, right? So here we have all full sets, three sets across four CDs. Okay, so from the first night, January 29th, and the set does not really deviate much from night to night. For those of you either were around at the time and going to see the Almonds live back in the early 70s or you know maybe just big on Allman Brothers history, they did not change their set list drastically right around that time. They were basically playing the same tunes, give or take a song or two that they would kind of cycle in and out each night. But for the most part, like 90% of the set list remained the same. So you'll notice that most of the songs in these three performances very similar to the Fillmore album that we all know and love recorded six weeks after these at the Fillmore East so from night one okay like I said January 29th we've got Statesboro Blues Trouble No More Don't Keep Me Wondering In Memory of Elizabeth Reed Midnight Rider which is the one tune that kind of changes throughout each night uh, Dreams you Don't Love Me, and Whippin' Post. So it uh, needs to be said here. So in memory of Elizabeth Reed on that first night is 14 minutes, 28 seconds. It's very good. The one great thing I always liked about in memory of Elizabeth Reed, it's like no matter which performance, which recording you hear from whatever venue, that tune is always great. And it's always a little bit different because both Dwayne and Dickie play their solos a little bit different. It's just such a great tune. It's one of my... It, Probably my yeah, it is my favorite Allman Brothers tune, and I just love hearing all the different renditions of it from you know this era of the band. Uh, you don't love me is almost 17 minutes long, a lot of jamming on that. Then you've got a near 19 minute whipping post. Whipping post is very good. Okay, let's go to uh, night number two, the 30th of January. Once again, kicking off with Statesboro Blues. That tune doesn't deviate much from night to night. It's pretty much the same. Uh, Trouble no more. Don't keep me wondering. In memory of Elizabeth Reed, which is a little bit shorter here, it's just under 12 minutes. Then you've got Stormy Monday in place of Midnight Rider. Stormy Monday is very good here. It's uh, just over nine minutes. And then you've got a also a 16-minute You Don't Love Me, as well as a 16-minute Whippin' Post. So both uh, those two tracks, slightly less on the jam meter, right, on night number two. Okay. Going ahead to night number three, the 31st of, of January, you've got, again, Statesboro Blues, Trouble No More, Don't Keep Me Wondering, so that does not change at all. Then we got also a memory of Elizabeth Reed, again, a little bit uh, a little bit shorter than night one, but a little bit longer than night two, coming in at just over 12 minutes. Then Midnight Rider pops back into the set for a quick 30 or three minutes, right? And then they come back with a little bit, another different tune, all right, Hoochie Coochie Man sung by Barry Oakley. Very good rendition here. Uh, and then you've got uh, Dreams, okay, which does which makes an appearance for the first time since night number one, just over 10 minutes long. Uh, then a 17-minute You Don't Love Me, 
Okay, and then over on disc four, we continue night number three, because again, they added a couple extra songs. I guess they had a little bit more time to play, right? So you've got uh, a five minute and change version of Hot Lana, which is very cool, but then a near 21 minute version of Whip and Post, which is killer. And it, as a bonus, if that wasn't enough, because we have some extra room on disc number four here, uh, there is a bonus. 45, almost 46 minute version of Mountain Jam live from the warehouse in New Orleans from uh, about a year before, from uh, what is this, March 13th, 1970, which is pretty damn cool. That's like Jam O Rama people, all sorts of killer snake and guitar solos and drum solos and excellent Hammond work from uh, from Greg. Uh, I will say the the, the uh, quality of these recordings are very good. Okay, The musicianship is stellar. Greg sounds awesome on these. All right, he, His voice is in great shape. Hammond organ is great. The guitar work of both Dickie and Dwayne off the charts. J-Mo and, uh, and Butch, killer on the dueling drums. Barry's bass is great. It's very, very good. It's just incredible. Like, you know, we're so used to the Fillmore, you know, the Fillmore East uh, set that we've, like I said, we've all been listening to for you know, almost 50 years. And then they come out with this and it's like, wow, this is great too. It's just, you know, the Allman Brothers were just peaking ridiculously at this point in time. So this is a, a fantastic, fantastic uh batch of recordings from the vaults man from you know you really it's like almost any band who played at the Fillmore east or west for whatever reason back in those years just absolutely killed it and there's so many historic performances uh there's a great kind of essay from uh john linsky talking about the shows comparing them to the Fillmore uh east shows from you know six weeks later just a, a great great archival collection of music here. If, you, if you're an Allman Brothers fan, you absolutely have to have this. It's abso it's just fantastic. And even though like all the songs are really familiar and it's, you know, you, you, you've got the Fillmore East show, or shows I should say, because they kind of took bits and pieces from, from that whole weekend they played. Uh, it, it's, it's still, you're going to hear all these differences, right? You're going to hear all these little nuances. The solos are going to be different. Some of the arrangements are changed slightly. It's just amazing how the band was night after night playing the same songs, but presenting them just a little bit differently. And that's what like the early 70s was all about, right? That's what bands like this were all about. So visit us on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube every damn day, pretty much. So uh, tomorrow, look for uh, another classic album, War. I've got some other new releases I want to talk about that's coming over the next uh, couple of days. And I'm hoping to get to tomorrow morning that new Forgotten Favorites episode that I've been talking about for like two weeks. All the stuff is sitting right here, just uh, trying to find the time. I'm actually off from work for a few days, so I'll be able to kind of pump out some stuff before a bunch of family comes in for the weekend, right? Family festivities, pool, barbecue, beer, fun, all that kind of stuff. So we'll see you tomorrow, guys. Take care and have a good one. Bye-bye.